Hi, my name is Jamie Tomey, and I am pleased to welcome you to the Evanston Bound Corin Tour series brought to you by Artist Book House. Each week we get to talk to some amazing book artists and writers, letterpress printers and paper makers. It's such a good time. I hope you enjoy this episode. Everyone. Welcome to this week's Quarantour. This week I'm so excited to have Lisa Ricketts with us. She is amazing and I can't wait for you to see all of the work um, in the slides, but also she has agreed in the future to add some more work to our ABH Saturday Share hashtag, which is on our Facebook group. So if you're not part of our Facebook group yet and you're on Facebook, go to the group Artists, plural, Bookhouse, and just join and we you'll see more work from Lisa in the future. So let me go through her bio real quick. So we can do the introductions. <laughs> We're very fancy here now, Lisa. You, you may not have known this. Okay. So um, Lisa Ricketts is an artistic Jackie of many trades, which I love that phrase. And I'm pretty sure she coined that phrase. So instead of Jack of all trades, she's Jackie of many trades. An MFA from SAIC, she pursued her own photography work as she taught photo at lab schools at University of Chicago for 26 years, which is unbelievable. For the last 17 years, she's been creating handmade books. Six of them are now part of the Joan Flash Permanent Book Collection at SAIC, um, which is led by our friend April Sheridan. So that is, is a great collection. If you want to learn more about it, you can go to their website, SAIC, the School of the Art Institute. I think it's artinstitute.org. Um, and then search Joan Flash. And it's a collection of artist books. And it's phenomenal. And so you have six books in there. So most recently, she's been working with assemblage and collage, which we will talk about today. Um, and so a couple of things that she has mentioned, one, one quote that I just love, making books led me to assemblage as it is a very natural extension. Once I was told to stick to a single thing in art. So her brand, my brand would be recognizable and remembered by curators. As I do not make my work for curators or buyers, I threw that annoying suggestion into the bin. Um, into the bin. So her website is uh, deadphoto.com, which is also uh, something that we can share here. I can put that in the chat as well. So while you are having enjoying this conversation with Lisa, you could drop things into the chat and then towards the end, we'll open back up to the Brady Bunch Zoom share and people can um, can say goodbye later in person and, and we'll do that. So Lisa, welcome to our quarantine today. I'm so excited to have you. Now, the first question I always ask book artists, how did you come to the book arts? Um, through my teaching. I found that, uh, and this was oh, 20 years ago, I found that students who were doing portfolios uh, needed another way to share their work other than just with students in class. So I thought, I think it would be a good idea for students to start making limited edition books of their work. Oh. And, um, and so that's how I started also um, making books of my work, but initially it was to give them another venue. Okay. So then did you, was it kind of, uh, how did you learn how to make books and how did you, how did you start that? Did you go to the Book and Paper Center downtown when we had it there at Columbia? Were you involved in that or did you just kind of, you know, Google wasn't that big of a thing 20 years ago. So how did that work for you? Well, I worked with um, a book artist and conservator who was fabulous in Chicago, whose name was Deborah Howe. Yes. And um, 
And she uh, came to my class and showed students how to do different kinds of books. So I learned along with them. Oh, I and love that. <laughs> I became a student with my students. That was wonderful. And I also went to, um, to Rochester to the, um, oh my God, now I'm going to forget the name of the place. You know, the Center for Books in Rochester. Ah. Ah. Does anybody want well, to drop anyway. it? Yeah, Joseph, do you know what the name of it is? Or Maria? I am, I am I'm, not. Uh, it's, yeah, they are fabulous with books. And um, so I, I go to Rochester often because I love the city of Rochester also. Okay. It's old and funky and it's the home of photography. So it was uh, a, a nice way to get away and learn something new. Yeah. And, and so then you started making your books. Mm -hmm. And I started making my books and then I just started playing, which okay. is not something I was used to. As a photographer, I was... Um, very into sort of a rigid craft, very traditional and mm -hmm. very refined. Mm -hmm. And um, there wasn't a lot of play. And so when I came to the book and I could be by myself, play entered, um, entered my work. And I found myself freed to, to, do, to make mistakes. Oh. And do whatever uh, I wanted and not censor myself. I love so that. I found I found that so liberating that I didn't that it wasn't that I didn't love photography anymore. I love photography. I love the history of photography. I just don't want to make photographs anymore. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to continue. Yeah. Or. Or what? But I, I so enjoy the 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 art of the book because uh, I can fumble around by myself and then um, live with it for a while and then make changes and decide whether it's worth worth good or not good. I right. can look. I can force myself from it and look at it that way yeah it's and, a little bit different because once you have the once well back in the day of course with photography it was a little bit different than digital photography now but yeah. you you would have that that um thing that you would print and that's it yeah i mean unless you were mucking around in the dark room yeah and yeah. uh and i loved the traditions of photography I really needed something more liberating. Yeah. So, so we have a couple of, uh, Joseph was asking if it was called Flower City Arts. And then Writers and Books in Rochester is what Margaret Zold says. And then Maria has dropped the, um, Maria Burke in, in, Mil in Madison has dropped the, the website there. So it, is that what it was? Writers and Books? No, and books? neither of them. And and it's I'm so embarrassed because it's just the over fifty, you know, forgetting names. <laughs> but <laughs> it'll well, come to me. It'll come. <laughs> to me. And then of course we can always add it to the description on the YouTube yes. channel or whatever. Okay, so do you want to go ahead? Should I go ahead and start um, your slideshow, or do we want to talk a little bit about how COVID has worked for you? I think that will it makes sense because it in it in the imprint of it, of covid is has been enormous um on me and on my work and on 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 everything i do okay so so then i think we'll that's important as yeah. as sort of a backdrop uh all of the work that you'll see all of the assemblage work was done during covid as well as yeah. the books that i have here um and that kind of is the undercurrent um you'll see a lot of fear in the work there's a lot of fear there's death there's yeah. sometimes a longing for a time that was more innocent oh. um 
all of those things, you know, run through the pieces. Yeah. Um, okay. Often a lot. Okay. So. Yeah. So the, let me pull it up here and we can um, go, through. go through it. So let me hit play. I'm going to try, I need to spotlight you so that you're okay. our person off to the side. There you are in the recording. Okay. So and I, um, chose, I, just, I just chose this image of the spilled glue <laughs> because I am not a manual person who is manually adept. And making books and assemblage is sometimes just torture. <laughs> I wind up with glue and paint all over me. So I wanted to honor that time of glue. The, kind, okay. the, the mess, the mess. This mess. Okay, mess. so tell us about this piece. Um, this piece um, began with uh, my thinking about the children in cages on the border. Um, I'm Latin American, even though I might not look Latin American. My father was from Peru, and I lived in Peru many years, and it informs who I am as a person, that, lat part, that Latina part. Yeah. So thinking about children in cages on our border was, is so painful. Yeah. And it's also slipped into the background because of COVID and because of the politics and chaos of every day that I didn't want people to forget the parents who have been separated from their children and may not ever see them again. Now, how and big this piece, if we're looking, because we, we, I have no idea. So is it like six inches, 10 inches? Eight inches. Eight inches. So it's a lovely. Maybe nine. Maybe so, nine. Okay. Um, and um, how I decided on the materials, um, I guess it began with um, the head. <laughs> yeah. and, um, I, I found a box that I thought the tea, the tea canister that I thought um, would be fine for her. Yeah. And then um, somebody sent me, Jane Fulton Alt sent me some um butterflies that she made um out of plastic oh, and wow. i thought they would be like her wings yeah and um and so then of course the text um the text is always very important um they took our boy and uh, that the X on her face was that X is just some kind of a thing that was packing material in a box. And I thought, no, nah, I need to cover her mouth because she's not able to speak. Yeah, she's visible and speechless, but she yeah. has no. Sign. Yeah. All right. I'm going to move to the next one. If that's OK. I want to make sure we get through all of them in time. Yes. Uh, this one. Um, Kind of creeps me out with the bread. <laughs> well, that's exactly it. And the next one will creep you out even more. Of course. Um, the thing that I noticed during COVID is that everybody, there was a rush to make bread. I couldn't find, we couldn't find toilet paper in the stores, but I also could not find flour or um, the stuff, the yeast. The yeast, yes. That, that, was, was, very, that was difficult. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, why are people rushing to make bread? And it's because it's just the old kind of comfort food. Yeah. Uh, the thing we look to to remind us of a, of a time past when we didn't just buy things from the grocery store. Yeah. And also, it's home. It's home and made at home. Um, but at the same time, there's something very um, disingenuous about making bread and feeling all homey and nice, <laughs> because it's not homey and nice. It's 
there's a pandemic yeah. that is used as a political tool um, okay. against us. And so um, I also was playing off the, the fact that it was comfort, but it was also discomfort. Okay. And inside um, is a hospital and um, a room I created with paper and it's a collage inside. You can see mm -hmm. the different layers inside the, the bread. Yeah. yeah. But the original, before I did the cutouts, because this was the original on the right, was what I did in Photoshop with different layers of beds and images. And then the, it became the time to cut them out and put them into the bread. Now, so this piece of bread, of course, isn't going to last. So is the photograph oh, of the piece the no, artwork? The, no, the bread will last. Boy, I'll tell you, the layers of polyurethane in and out. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it will last longer <laughs> than a hot dog in a landfill. It'll <laughs> last longer than a McDonald's McRib yeah. that's been put in a closet <laughs> or whatever. Yes. Okay. I'm that's cool. I didn't realize you had coded it. So thank you. For oh, yeah. Are we ready to move to the next? Yes. And this is as an extension of that. I um, made a sourdough uh, bread bowl mm -hmm. and then um, filled it with uh, figures of the dead yeah um you can see down in there there are hospital beds and figures of people in fact it has more people in it now this was at one stage that i photographed it but there are more human figures in it um and it is painted as well that green kind of stuff that suggests like they're thrown into some kind of a dump yeah um, and it kind of reminds paint. me of mold as well yes yeah. yes it's not mold though it's it really is all paint and did you then, this resin filled it is filled with um epoxy, epoxy. Um, and um it will i mean they're so it's very clear yeah. and because of the reflections you can't see as many of you can you know you can even me taking the picture there it's yeah. hard to photograph but yeah. um you can see all the figures going all the way down yeah and again it was the idea of trying to um make a comfort bread but inside um the comfort bread is always the reminder that those there were those dying and there was no comfort for them yeah i'm gonna move to the next slide there is a lot of loss in this i think and i'm gonna mute because my dog is barking so i'm gonna mute for a minute while you talk about this one uh this one is it's called um big cry baby and i'm i really am hesitant to talk about its meaning because um i think you can read it any way you want to but i will say um that it is made of a red wing candle holder, um, a mother of pearl button, oh, okay. string, human teeth, wow. and, and um, a dog bone. Holy cow. That is very creepy. Thank you. <laughs> How big is it? Because I can and see the so teeth, but it's about five no maybe it's seven. a little bigger maybe seven and a half eight, eight inches. inches yeah they're, they're all pretty small let's move to the next one this one i just love this is so my aesthetic so talk about this one please um well i i don't know that i want to talk about the meaning at all. I think that people can interpret it the way they want, but there are certain elements. It's called Long Gone. And um, it's uh, the inside of a telephone that's okay. been, a, a cell phone that's been taken apart. And 
Um, there's a gem um, tintype that yeah. of a guy named Henry Leonard, Henry B. Leonard. And um, it just, the idea of time and communication and loss and all those things came to mind for me. Yeah. So there's a question from Nancy in the chat. Was your work disturbing before COVID? How has COVID shifted that, that theme for you? I think it was far less disturbing. This has allowed me the privacy, it, working with assemblage, I have the privacy of my own home to, this is not, I don't not, do not consider the, this art therapy. Let me okay. be clear about that. It's not a therapy for me. Yeah. Rather, it is an expression of the urgency I have to say something. I, I see. feel that we, I don't know how long we'll be around. I don't know how long I'll be around. And so it also is coupled with my age. And so I think I need to say things before I go. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how much of that is COVID or how much of that is actually working with objects. Yeah, and handling the things also kind of tells you what you want to, what they want to become, sort of, if that makes exactly. sense. Exactly. I mean, I don't start out to say, oh, I'm going to do this. It's all of a sudden, one thing grabs, it's, they gravitate to each other, the, yeah. the part. Yeah. All right. It's sort of out of my hands sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of like a writer whose character yes. tells them what the story is. So tell us about this piece. This piece is very personal. Um, it is really relating to um, a relationship in my life with one of my children, which is at the moment very strained. Okay. And so, the you know, it's about love and it's about law or, or loss and it's about remembering uh, you know a, a lot of my work is also about being a mother and a grandmother okay and if you're a mother you know that love is connected very much to pain that joy is very connected to uh law uh, Loss. loss melancholy there's a melancholy tinge to yeah everything. yeah and that um you know being a mother is has two sides to it it is a pleasure and it is a it is a pain yeah and so this speaks to kind of both yeah uh, the pleasure and the love and the sorrow and the loss and the heartache yeah that. you can interpret it however you want but i love that that kind of led me that way. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is uh, a piece that it's called Return of the Lizard. <laughs> I, don't you, I, I don't know if you can see on the, and I, it's very subtle. If, if you don't look at my work in, in real life, you would not see it in the photo. And I didn't want to like make it so obvious. Okay. But on the middle photo, you can see a little flag in the background. It's red, and it's a MAGA flag that's been oh. found in the dirt. And um, this is like me, right here. Is that what? Yes. We're, yeah. Okay. Yes. And this to me is a sort of um, a look at the ev our evolution as humans coming okay. from these feet holding globes and then the dinosaur kind of things <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. And, yeah i don't know if you have the the slide yeah it's the next slide i think okay let me are move the people. there yes. they are yeah that's sort of contemporary the little commuters and things up from the dinosaurs 
And, and then you get a middle part right here. Yes. That's, that's sort of, these are ages, like ages of humanity. Okay. And, and then. Next, next slide. Oh, no, no, no. We're okay. And then Go the ahead. top is just the return to the lizards. This right oh. here. I see. This is clever. This clever. It wasn't, I mean, I never, while I was working on it, just the meaning made itself. It as made, I worked on no. Yeah. Made, and this is, is this one piece that, that breaks apart and comes back yeah, together? It's an old train relay um that um i in an, an old industrial piece that had been discarded and when i picked it up um it, it came apart and i thought oh my god this is wonderful so i start i just started working on it and uh putting yeah. up all the different things um on it and um again in terms of meaning you can you can make your own you can um, find meaning in it yeah um, so beth adler is our quarantor for next week and she says she has a work commitment at 12 30 so she'll be dropping off and okay. she's quoting here i love this work and i think it will relate to my tour next week so much cool. of what that has to say both in her voice and in her work resonates with me thank you jamie and lisa so she's going to be our quarantine next week and she's got a COVID journal that she's done and and i i do appreciate her comments on the the work and i look forward to to see you do i will be there yeah good uh should we should we switch next slide yeah. okay yeah yeah <laughs> oh here's the back side <gasps> oh yes so okay. the two sides of the relay you can see um to have different milagros on them yeah yeah i love that that's gorgeous um oh okay okay this is a very personal piece um i was um a new mom living in peru and i lived in an old house on an old cobblestone street and the windows were all covered in you know how they have wrought iron bars yeah. Yeah. The windows and there are no glass in the windows they're just you open the shutters and it lets all so oh, all the air and light in sure and so i was changing my baby's um diaper next to the window as this old rickety truck came down the road and I could hear it coming, and it was wobbling like a drunk on its old wheels. And as it passed the window, I saw that inside the truck, it was full of dead bodies. Oh, no. Yes, there was, at the time, there was a coup d'etat, an attempted coup d'etat, and we had been hearing shots in the city and nobody was going out and it was uh, a dangerous time. Um, it was a failed coup d'etat. Yeah. So apparently uh, they were driving through this little street and keeping away from the main street so people wouldn't see it. But yeah. I saw it. Yeah. And, wow. um, That's hard. And, well, it, it, it was almost like a coldness I felt. I, I saw the bodies and I thought, this is what it's like. This is what it's like when yeah. there is war. And um, so yeah. this is my came And out. it stuck with you and it's haunted you. Wow. I don't know that it's, the word is haunted, but it's stayed with me as a memory that's very strong. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't disturb me as much as stay with me. Got you. Okay. Uh, this is a piece dedicated to my grandson, William, and mm -hmm. it is about um, COVID vocabulary. Okay. And if you go to the, the, the umbrella is sort of, uh, you know, about chance and magic and all those sorts of things. And then if you go to the next slide, 
you'll oh, see okay. in the vocabulary words that he was l learning in in his Zoom classes, which are oh, wow. social distance, isolate, lockdown, contagion, hotspot, epidemic, for wow. a little boy in third grade. Wow. In third grade, holy cow. Yeah. And so the language of children now is also very um, influenced by COVID. Yeah, things are shifting. Things are shifting. And I really liked using a Hummel because Hummels are typically um, very uh, children looking very innocent and sweet. Mm -hmm. It's a time of the past. Yeah. Uh, and it's endangered. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is really a powerful piece. The clown That's guy. Yeah. Yeah. And this is called Put on a Happy Face. Uh, and the words, and it's all industrial kind of stuff in there in the flags. And at the bottom it says, uh, when what you feel is shame. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, There's again, the Yeah. Now, just a technical question. What are these letters from? <laughs> I um, use uh, what's called a cricket um, oh, okay. to do yeah. a lot of a lot of the cutouts. I'll I'll design a a picture or a, or text or whatever, and then I'll cut them out and um, put them into pieces. Yeah. Um, and alter and then color them and paint them and do whatever to them. So it's yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So in yeah, the chat, I really love a cricket. It is an yeah, amazing it's extra. It's a great tool. Yeah. Uh, so in the chat, Honey says, I love the Hummel piece with the vocabulary of COVID. The COVID lexicon is important, especially as it weighs on children. She's terrific. Um, I agree. Uh, it yeah. was like um, in 91 when we had the Gulf War, words like um expressions like um oh when people died and it was like friendly fire and stuff right. there were all sorts of expressions that were like euphemisms mm -hmm. and students my students learned those and it was like oh god what a horrible yeah. lexicon yeah and right so, now you know who who thought last year at the same time that we would even say the word quarant or or drop it into the chat or you're on mute those sorts of things are exactly. very much part of this so this is betsy the clown yes referring to one of our cabinet members uh -huh. and um <laughs> yeah. and oh hold this on. Time... i'm sorry i'm gonna interrupt um, honey added to the comment, my five-year-old grandson asks about dying, if I saw anyone dying or since February, we FaceTime two times daily for an hour each and death was the language. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry to it's interrupt. Not necessarily, it's not necessarily a bad thing as long as the adults, I mean, I think as a teacher and I'm a, I'm a teacher, I yeah. think that to be straightforward right. and um and clear yeah. and uh, i think uh, uh, children understand that uh, yeah amazing well yeah so tell us um, about the clowns piece about welcome Betsy back the clown says welcome back to school and it's something that i have been terrified about all mm -hmm. summer that my grandchildren go back to school and that the pressure from the um, Department of Education and from the government and from people who want commerce back in gear, um, it, it co covers um, so much of the dangers mm -hmm. that um, that we face. And so this was this was an angry piece, um, but. Um, I felt like I needed to say something. And there's more about school. School is very much a part of the work. Yeah. So 
Uh, where are we in our slideshow? I want to make sure we are okay on timing. We're are getting we? close to the end. Yeah. Okay. These okay. are all pieces. Yeah, this is the next one that's actually a lunchbox, uh, an old lunchbox. That, these are all found objects. Yeah. And it's a lunchbox that I had, and I had a small little <clears throat> cart, uh, what do you call that? Blackboard. And mm -hmm. I decided to make uh, the lunchbox open into a classroom. Yeah. So this is a recent, very recent piece. I think this is yeah. like the second. And this is uh, just called the COVID classroom. Yeah. And I love those little figures um, that I just happen to find that were yeah. kind of clutching at each other. And yeah, they're a little close. afraid. Yeah. yeah. They looked yeah. a little afraid to me. I love it. This is, and one of the things that I love about this work is how worn and and rusty and just corroded. Yeah, just viscerally sort of beat up everything is. So what's this this stairwell staircase piece? <laughs> you staircase this piece. is recent too, right? You sent this, this is piece. very recent. Yeah. Um, it's morphed. I had it, I thought it was finished when it was just the box. Mm. It was a little portfolio box. And I, um, my, with the help of my husband, cut a hole into the front and um, we put in a door that said, keep out. And for me, it was um, inside, there is this um, sort of sleepy, angelic girl. And um, a, the workings of a clock mm -hmm. and um, it says let me dream mm -hmm. so it was to me it was about her isolating herself and being allowed to dream and keeping others out yeah and um, then I changed I found the stairs which worked really well and then the text, I, it's all wood, all yeah. of it is. And then the text just was, my spirit is crying for leaving and um, words from, the, from a rock song. Yeah. That was Stairway to Heaven. So yeah, so, um, Katie in the chat just said, I am a big fan of the gooey connection that holds the chairs into the lump lunchbox and that is also that epoxy resin i think yes yeah yes. so go no, ahead always, it, yeah. um it, just letting her know the the i photographed it before the epoxy was totally totally dry so you can see a little of its murkiness yeah um that will disappear over time but you will still see the gooey yeah and the, absolutely uh, yeah Katie, have you ever, we, I don't remember if you ever took any of the resin. We don't, we don't need to talk about that now, but, um, yep. okay. Are we ready to move to the next? I think that's the end. <gasps> it is. Look oh, at that. Oh, Bidoo, oh, Bidoo, oh. Bidoo. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Great. Thank you for sharing all of those with us. This was incredible, these slides. So, so let's shift a little bit. I want to I want to touch on you already talked about how actually let me cancel your spotlight real quick so it's on yes. my camera here when I'm speaking. Um you talked a little bit about COVID being sort of an in, inspirational time and you've been very prolific which is incredible to me how prolific you have been. Um but let's let's just walk through your day to day because the other day you and I were talking about how sometimes you don't even take breaks to eat. Um, so what happens day to day? Your studio is in your house. You have two different spaces that you work. So tell us, tell us, walk us through your day. Walk us through your COVID pandemic day. <laughs> COVID pandemic day probably begins right here um, by my computer. And I kind of design an idea for something rudimentary, I mean, on the computer. I'll do, I'll take bits of images and bring them together 
in Photoshop and think about what, what's that. And then I will, I'm always in my pajamas. I, I mean, <laughs> nightgown. I'm always. Craig More. can testify to this. I never get out of my nightgown. I maybe get out of my nightgown on days when I have to go outside, but sometimes I walk down the street in my nightgown. I don't sure. care. Sure. And um, it's, uh, so my day begins with walking down to um, the banana cabana in the backyard and sitting uh -huh. down and kind of organizing a table where I have all these little things, tons of little things, workings from clocks, industrial things, boxes, tins, little mm -hmm. figures. Yeah. And then um, if I'm at the beginning of something, I'll just pick up one piece. And it's as if that piece calls to another piece. It's sure. just, I promise you, it is not so conscious for me. It is allowing this thing to kind of, these pieces to gravitate to each other. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, once they gravitate to each other, I kind of see a meaning. Yeah. So they, then they I can start, what they want. Yeah. Then I can start to say, I can start to respond and be honest with those pieces and say, okay, I'll try this. And then, then comes the gluey icky phase when I get glue, glue and paint all over me. I sweat and curse and um, struggle. And sometimes uh, I just have to leave in tears because it's just so hard. Oh, I appreciate yeah. I come back. yeah I appreciate your honesty on that because at you know you and I before the before we started letting people into this zoom room uh, we were talking about the messiness of making art and that's part of it that process of that struggle and the failure and the growth that happens when you're making something um, so I just want to check into the chat real quick Craig says his connection is very unstable um, but, Okay, and then um, Katie says that pajamas, she calls that COVID wear, and also says you must have a, an amazing collection of goodies. If you have such, you have so many things laying around that you can work with, you, you just probably have gathered all these things your whole life and just have them there. Yes. Yes. That's really I also cool. will buy, I also will buy stuff if, if there's something I'm missing, I'll buy something off of um, Amazon or sure. most, like, most likely eBay where I'll find something old and ratty. Yeah. Um, but never under, never more than five or six dollars. And, uh, and, you know, like the lunchbox was somebody's lunchbox. And um, little did they know what it would become. Of and I course. think there's something cool about that. Yeah. These, these these objects came from places to become an art piece and they had other lives and i think that's cool yeah and i feel like the history of the piece sort of shows up in a weird you know subconscious way in the piece itself don't you think yeah. like the spirit of the piece itself and the people that had it um so let, let's why don't you hold up some of your books that you were you've made? Oh, hold on, Katie's got another this, comment. Katie, how do you know that something you find is something to have and keep yourself from being a hoarder? <laughs> um, There's a fine line between art supplies and hoarding, I think. Is no, no, said. I'm a hoarder. <laughs> I'm a hoarder. It's just that I, I I don't have a big house. That's why we built the banana cabana because I have so much stuff that it really had to go back there. It, yeah. you know, my poor husband is reduced to a little corner. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, uh, now all of the things I have around me from a broken phone to a, a, a miss a sock that has no match, they mm -hmm. are all 
um, characters, potential characters for an art piece. I mean, that's how I see them now. I don't see them as, uh, you know, hoarding. I see them as characters in something else. I love that. I love that framing of that. Um, okay, so why don't you go ahead and, and show us some of your, your books that you've made during COVID, too. You haven't just made privilege pieces, you've also made some books. So hopefully we'll yeah. be able to really see if you hold them up to the camera. And just to let you know, we have about 12 minutes left. And also some of these you've posted in the Artist Bookhouse group so people can see them there as well. Are they on your website as well? Yes. This is a book made just before COVID, and it's all handmade. It's called Kipu, and it is a, a Kipu is a series of knots in string that the Incans used to tell, to keep numbers and to tell stories. And this is the story, my story. Um, of my relationship to my ancestors in Peru, which in my research of my ancestors, I discovered that I'm related to the Inca who built Machu Picchu. He is my 20th. Uh, yes. He's wow. My 20th great grandfather. Holy and God. my family in Peru were all little aristocrats and despised the Indians. And I was always horrified by that. And then I discovered that the grandmother, my grandmother, who never left her house in 40 years because she said, why would I want to be among Indians and Yamas, mm. is the ancestor that leads back to the Inca. Oh, wow. And I have it all documented and this is the book that explains what a kipu is and then they're all inclusions like the page from my um uh passport when i first went to peru oh I and the it. story and the story um of my going to peru with yeah. all tip-ins of of this relationship that I discover. That is so really great. Yeah, it was a really amazing experience. I don't know if you can see that. Man. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but it's, it's hard to on your website. Yeah. yeah. You okay. can see that on my website. So that's wait, was wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, don't put that away yet. Uh, can you hold the binding side up, the spine? Oh, yeah. Show us what that looks like a little bit closer to your camera. So how, is this a Coptic stitch? No. Stitch, or is this just knots? No, they're individuals, uh, individual um, uh, stitches uh, for single pieces driven through the board and connected through knots. Oh, they're wow. not connected to each other. Oh my goodness, holy and cow. So each string then has two parts to it and each string these knots each have the numbers and the story these knots represent from the Inca to me the year wow. we were born uh, the year we were born the year we died my children everything is in those knots and I see looking at it that there was something special about the binding i knew it so thank yeah. you for sharing that that's very clever and very very cool yeah show us um, another show us another <laughs> this is another book about motherhood and it's called lorem ipsum ah. which are the words that you know uh -huh. uh, always appear when you start to write on a computer Lorem Ipsum are those words that you just sort of, that are, that the computer puts in and then you're supposed to put your text in its yeah. stead. Yeah. Well, I wanted to, this is about the pleasure and pain of being a mother. 
And I called it Lorem Ipsum, as you can see here. Yeah. But I did not know at the time that, and this says, sometimes there is sadness and guilt. This is all about being a mom. Wow. And all the different, it leads you through different things. But what I didn't realize when I was making the book is that the words lorem ipsum come from, and she has best world's best mom, and then it says bad bitches. <laughs> if you want to um, bleep that out, it's okay. But it's yeah, sure. yeah, go and, ahead. Um, Lorem Ipsum is a discourse that, uh, that, oh, oh my goodness, pop up, yeah, that Cicero had on pain and pleasure. Oh, so, wow. Oh, oh, my God. So when I all of a sudden discover that the words that I chose, here again, it's the serendipity of art. Yeah, the words that I chose to represent, to tell me about pain and pleasure were Cicero's words about pain and pleasure. Pain and pleasure. I love and, that. That's and so we cool. don't even, yeah, and here, here's the, again, the, those are the words from Cicero. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. And oh. Uh, and so are, mother's pain. Yeah, these are all... Um, these are all one of a kind pieces. This no, is not, these, they're not an addition. No, these, this book, for instance, is these are, I made a one of a kind edition, but I decided to um, work on the computer and s do these through Zeno. Oh, and okay. So they're actually, uh, I actually sell them. Oh, and, okay. um, you know, I wanted to have some for my children, some for friends, da 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 da, da. Yeah, so you may, you've got multiple copies of that one. So um, real quick, your website is www.deadphoto.com and people can yeah, find more word. work, more, all one word, more work on there and more about you and your, your assemblages, your photographs back in the day, all of the things and sort of, when you go to Lisa's website, you can really see the progress and the shift and, of course, the depth of the work and how things shift from photography to um, artist books to assemblage back to artist books all around. Yeah. You can read. So I want to thank you so much for being with us today, Lisa. It was a fantastic conversation, and I'm just so honored. Like I said before, and you and I have had this conversation, I couldn't, I couldn't curate your PowerPoint for you because the work is just also incredibly powerful and lovely. And I appreciate your sharing it with us today. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, say thank you, thank you, thank you so much to you. And also, I would like to thank everyone else. I'm not stopping the recording just yet, but I'll stop it in a minute. So if you would like to support Artists Bookhouse more, uh, our website is artists, plural, more than one artist working in a book house, artistsbookhouse.org. And you can go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter, which comes out once a month. Also, one of the things that subscribers get is our weekly verses and vignettes where we hire a writer and an artist to do a serialized story for the month. And it's so great. And you can also donate to support our nonprofit there. Hi again. Thank you so much for watching this week's Quarant Tour. We really appreciate your support. If you want to learn more about our guest from today, please read the description below. And if you'd like to support more programming like this, coming from Artist Bookhouse, please visit our website at artistbookhouse.org slash donate. Thank you again for joining us.